know I'm not out of shape. This thing is heavy as hell. <sighs> I wouldn't fault you if you called this a cash register. The reality is, however, is that you're close. This is a retail point of sales machine. It looks exactly like a cash register in every single way. And you see point of sales equipment every single day. This, however, is quite simply a terminal. This is not a full on cash register, even though it is enormous and weighs a million pounds. Really, well, you wouldn't have this in a mom and pop store. Never, this is way too expensive for something like that. This would be for retail networks and, well, shopping chains, which would buy these by the hundreds or even thousands. You'd have maybe a dozen of these inside the grocery store or department store, and it would all connect to a central store concentrator, which basically meant that you had a bunch of active connections that were reduced to one leased line, which would connect to the set company's central mainframe system. Very likely it was a mainframe that was being handled in this case here. And this automated a lot of things. So it was a pretty revolutionary thing in the entire world of marketing and sales. Because before, when it came to um, sales per uh, clerk, when it came to inventory control, when it came to tax totaling, and when it came to just sales totaling altogether, that was all manual. That all had to be done, like you had to take your journaling paper out of the cash register, you had to add it together, it went onto the main ledger, everything was done at the end of the day, that was sent off to head office, they do the math, punch into the mainframe, and there you go. This here does all of that automatically, mainly because it's not the till that's doing it in a smart fashion, it's the mainframe that's doing it all for you. This machine right here is the class 250 from the National Cash Register Company, or NCR. You know, that company that was based out of Dayton, Ohio, that seemed to make every single cash register for the most part of the 20th century. Hence their name, National Cash Register. This one here is um, beat up. Uh, I could not find a better example of uh, a point of sale system from the mid 1970s. I would date this to somewhere between 1977 and 1979. And there's a couple of quirks that are going on in here. But I'm going to show you around the outside of this here and then we're gonna see if we can crack it in and look inside this thing at the same time because I got a couple of questions, but there's also a few things I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have answered at the exact same time. And I'm not spinning this around. It is amazingly heavy. It's scratching the hell out of my table. We're just gonna work with that here. And, well, yeah, it's huge. It's like half the size of me and weighs about 150 pounds, if I wanted to be absolutely honest about this here. Ugh. But if I move it here. All right, can I even get that in focus? There we go. So the power cable on this thing is the first thing I think is kind of ridiculous. Here, let me see. At first I thought that maybe rats or rodents or something that, like that had chewed through it and just left the braided shielding of the cable. And the reality is no, like this is, this is the way it is. Like you look at the end here and I can hear the heat, see the heat shrink tubing that goes over that. This was just an absurd externally braided shielded cable that you would be using to plug it in. It is three pronged by the way, whatever. So that's how you would power just 120 volts. The front of the machine here, now there's a couple of things to point out. First off, I have a slip printer that's hiding over here and it's this stainless steel plate. It's about the only thing on this thing that's not rusty. On the front here, I do have a smoked plastic panel that's dropped down and there's a display behind there. There's also a display on the back side, but we'll get a better view of that in a couple of minutes here. I have a slot that goes here for where receipts come out for a customer, but we also have a window here that shows the journal printer. Even though this has complete automation for record keeping, a physical copy in some cases is preferable to be maintained. This machine will do it either way. It's just basically two printers. It's as simple as that. The keypad on this has pretty much all of your standard functions. So sure, one, two, three, zero, clear. And it has all the other department entries in here and like voiding non-taxable items, repeat transaction. But then there's also something else on here and I can just kind of make it out through this kind of moldy paper here. It says charge X. And down here it actually says master charge. The reality is it's, 
The other thing this would do is it automates credit transactions. Now, I'm pretty sure a few people out there will remember these devices. This is a credit card imprinter. And the idea is that before we had um, retail credit and debit machines, if you wanted to do a credit transaction, you would hand them the card, the, you would fill out a slip, they would do their portion of the slip, then they would put the card in this spot right here. There would be a brass plate over here which has their credit information and simply you could then imprint it from both cards, the, from the card, the plate, and the, pa the carbon paper behind the regular sheet of paper, and then you'd have your copy, and the store would have their copy. This machine, however, can do away with this here. It was the first step towards the modern credit debit machines, which are totally electronic. And what you would do is that when the transaction was at its total, you could specify charge X, you could enter in the card number. Now what you would be doing normally is you'd be looking through a book and then calling up the bank to see, hi, I want to verify that this v card has or Visa, ChargeX, same thing, that this card is cleared for a transaction. And they'd go and check it and do all that. But remember, this here is a network device to the mainframe. The mainframe has the ability to talk to the bank's central computer, which itself is more than likely a mainframe. So instead of taking several minutes to have to go through this entire process to complete one credit transaction, this here can do it electronically in under 30 seconds. That still seems like a fair bit of time, but that rapidly speeds things up. When remember, you have a queue of people, and the longer anyone waits in the line, well, the more nuisance it is. The front of the unit otherwise has, well, just a cash drawer down here. I don't have a key for the cash drawer on this. But oddly enough, I do have the three keys here for setting the power, the system mode, and for programming. And these keys are really cool. Um, if I take out the on off one and I zoom in on it, there we go. So we have our nice NCR key, this one's serialized or part number 10E. And I flip it over, it actually says on off. And the same goes for the mode switch. If I so want that, the mode switch specifies mode as well. And it's nice to have these keys here, but the program one is irking my curiosity. We'll get to that. Don't worry about it. But that's all there is for the front of the machine. Now let me move to the side without snagging the cable. And I have to basically crawl over the table to get to this. So I have two doors. Normally there's a little knob that goes here and that would just let me advance back the journal so I could take a look at maybe, maybe there was an oops in the transaction I just wanted to double check on it or a price check. Otherwise, that pops down. It's magnetic to this metal plate right here and I can see inside the printer. And there is actually paper in the journal section still. Um, let's see if I can, I hate to pull this out but I don't think I have a choice. There we go. Uh, I do believe that uh, there's nothing on here. Either there's been no ink on this thing for a long, long time, or the ink itself has, oh, no, there's a wet spot here. I, oh, it's slowly coming back. I can actually see it. If I go back further here, suddenly I'm starting to see it. Uh, you're not going to see it with the quality of this camera, and even now, it's a stretch. Uh, yeah, oh, no, I'm sorry, wrong side, there you go. So, let me zoom in on that. And, there we go. And you can just make out... And you can just make out some of the last things, this register point of sales machine. I'm going to be mixing that up a lot. At the end of the day, we'll just call it a cash register, okay? You get the idea. But the last things that this till ever did. That's cool. I might as well save that for later. There we go. And there's still a little bit of paper that's still hiding in here, but I won't mess with that. And it is really rusty in here. So, when you get something for free that's been out in the weather, obviously they're not the best condition devices. So obviously the rain has run through this a fair number of times. So I don't know just how bad it is inside. But I can flip up this door 
And there's the rest of the, of the receipt printer hiding up here. There's an inking assembly. Um, everything is stuck. Uh, it all needs to be oiled. There is packing peanuts inside of this thing, which is kind of gross. But sure, why not? I guess it, eh, it didn't protect anything inside. But there's a whole printing assembly that's just hiding inside of this portion here. And just like that, and I can close it off. And now, if I flip it to the other side, we can see our slip printer, which hides under this door. And remember the imprinting system that was part of the credit system? Instead of using the imprinter, you would use the printer that's in here for the slips to do the actual credit transaction. It also works for checks, of course. And this is just as bad. This is rusty. Um, can I release anything in here? Oh, this comes out. What are you? You are... It looks like a slab of ink. Is this... It's still sticky. Yes. Okay. I guess the ink is oil-based? Sure. It does swing open. I love how solid this is, by the way. But there you go. Front, both sides, back of the unit now. Now things begin to get a little bit more interesting. And if I flip it around, there we go. This is really scratching this up. And now I actually have this right here, this overlay, which is hiding behind that smoked plastic. Here, give me a split second. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in one of my cameras. All right, so with that smoked plastic missing there, um, there's obviously something, it's glued to this panel here. I don't wanna pull it off yet because this is all in the way. And like I can see there's our digits that are hiding right here. Like I have various little text pieces that I guess will illuminate when whatever the display technology is behind lights up. So for example, I can list payment, total change, um, slip, miscellaneous, uh, cash, layaway, COD, um, com, uh, com alert. Remember, this is a network device. So those are all listed in there. Otherwise, that's all you would see from the customer side of the machine. And also, like, again, this thing is not in mint condition at all. What was happening is that when I found it, it was laying on its back, so this was facing down, and this here got crunched. Like, this panel piece here, this plastic, obviously, I'm assuming the clear piece of plastic here has fallen down and gone into the machine, but this was all wet. This was kind of a disaster. So this is broken, yay. But now I can also see where the power cable disappears in. And if I pull that out of the way and take a look here, you can't see this. You're just going to have to work with me. The National Cash Register Company, uh, 115 volts, 60 hertz, 2.1 amps. That sounds about right for a cash register, even for a point of sales device from this era. Now, Remember how we had a key here for programming the device. That means there is a local amount of memory in this till that allows me to configure the networking, configure certain variables and have them all set up here and be retained during power cycles. Now in the late 1970s, static RAM was expensive and required a battery backup if there was a power loss. You could use regular RAM, but again, you turn the machine off, unless you have some sort of backup power, that's just gonna get lost too. Uh, what's the point of ROM? Because if this is a custom uh, programming, there's no need for a program key, you can't modify anything. That kind of really limits us down. There's no disk system in here either, no floppies, no hard disks, nothing, nothing of that sorts. There can't be. Um, but that limit us, limits us down now to the really cool, but really expensive things. One is that this could contain bubble memory. The other is that this could contain core memory in a point of sales machine, core memory. You don't expect to find that in a piece of equipment like this. But why am I so attached to thinking this contains core memory? Because down here next to the 2.1 amps, this states this point of sales machine this register, this till, just this unit, consumes 400 watts of power. 
I know 42 inch plasma TVs that consume less power. Try to imagine a store which had 10 of these things running at the over in the grocery checkout. That's 4,000 watts of power peak. That's insane. There has to, it has to be core memory in this thing. Otherwise, like I can't think of anything else whose driver circuits require that much juice unless this thing is crammed full of TTL logic. It's pretty obvious from its weight and the fact that for the most part it's plastic, it's gonna have a linear power supply. That is gonna require us to dig into the machine and see what we can find. Unfortunately, this video here has gone on for a little bit too long. So we're gonna split this off into two parts. Part one was we looked at the outside of the machine and I described what a point of sale system of that time was doing. And in part two, we're gonna crack this thing open or try and crack it open in a gentle way and figure out exactly, yes, does this thing run core memory? And what on earth is inside of this thing that makes it such a mass? But until next time, have a good one.